isn't it? I want this to be the memory of the first dollar bill that flows through your life as you have radically changed your thought processes about what dollar bills really do and don't do. All right? There you go, Val. Get ready to do that. Before you do that, though, I'd like you to get a real understanding of what you're going to be doing here in a second. See, if I could just take a dollar bill out of my life, just one of those little green guys, and pull them off to the side and put it underneath a mattress. If I were to do that with each of my children before they were, just as they were born, and every day of their life, I took one of those little dollar bills out of our, our life and stuck it under the mattress for each of those kids, let's say. And by the time they reached retirement age, which is 65, 66, 67, uh, how much money will have accumulated under that mattress for that kid? Now we're assuming that there's 0% interest, all right? So it's just sticking under the mattress. So by the time they get to 66 years old, this is the kind of money that they will have generated at 0% interest. $25,000 would be under that mattress. Pretty, pretty fat mattress at that particular time. Of course, this will with inflation, though, and so that $25,000 won't be quite as much as we see it today. It might only be worth five dollars or $10,000, but still be a nice little chunk, wouldn't it? That's if you just took a dollar a day, and I want to make this so simple for you to understand. That every one of you is a dollar a day away from financial freedom. A dollar a day. At 3% interest, if we stuck that same dollar a day underneath the mattress at 3%, there'd be $75,000 sitting there by the time those kids reached their retirement age. And that's still not that much money, but at 3% would be probably the lowest interest rate you could find in any bank that would be totally safe and easy, just walk in and stick it in there, right? Now at 5% interest, which is a little more difficult, but you could probably do that with some government bond very easily, couldn't you? $200,000 would be sitting in that bank account at 5% interest. Anybody in this room could do that with no effort whatsoever at a dollar a day. When we get to 10% interest, now we start being a little more difficult. 10% interest, $2,750,000 is now sitting in that bank account. But there are ways that anybody in this room could do that without a whole lot of difficulty, frankly, because I'm going to show you different mutual funds you could put your money into at a dollar a day, 30 bucks a month. And, and it would achieve rates of, you know, 7, 8, 9, sometimes 10% and more. I'm going to give you a list of uh, mutual funds that have done 15% or more per year for the last 15 years in a row. And it's really simple. You can do 50 bucks a month. 15% interest. Notice what happens as you go from 10% to 15%. At a dollar a day, $50 million by the time you retire. A dollar a day. Is there anybody in here in the room that couldn't do a dollar a day? The real secret is how you do 15%, isn't it? That's the real secret, which is what we're going to be talking about. Now, when we go to 20% interest, it's as high as we're going to go. We're talking about $1 billion at a dollar a day. You're Ross Perot in embryo <laughs> at a dollar a day. Now, of course, you have to have 60 plus years of compounding at a fairly high rate of return. Now, 20% is a, a rate that's almost impossible for people to achieve consistently over a long period of time. That's, that's incredibly difficult. Well, uh, Warren Buffett, who is the wealthiest uh, American in the stock market, uh, started in 1955 with about $5,000 of his own money and added about $100,000 of other And now he's, uh, has a, uh, he has a, a net worth that's, I think, over $10 billion because his compounded annual rate of return is over 23% per year. And that's what he's done consistently every year, every year, every year. So if you have a $10 billion net worth, and your net worth goes up by 23% in the next year, how much money did you make that year? $10 billion times over 20? Yeah, you made over $2 billion in your net worth if you just make it go up uh, 20%. So I mean, you can see how it compounds. It really does. For most of us here in the room, uh, we're not going to achieve that billion dollar goal. And some of us really don't have any desire to achieve it. But what I want to point out is that if you could go between 10 and 20%, which is what I call wealth producing rates of return, between 10 and 20%, and you can squeak it up to the 11 and 12 in that range, you, you know, we're talking, we're talking three to one billion dollars worth of net worth at one dollar a day. Does everybody understand that now? You got that through your head? Take your dollar bill right now. I want you to realize what you're destroying when you destroy it. And I'll count to three and we'll do it together here, okay? So, uh, <coughs> We'll be tearing up our first billion right now. Ready to get? One, two, 
Anybody have a dollar bill? Kathy, did you get your dollar bill out? Yeah, she's really, yeah, she has interest in her heart's just, I don't know about this, Bob. Yeah, yeah we're going to pass the tape around. You'll be able to tape it back together, but I want you to experience what this is like. Get ready. One, two, three, rip. <laughs> Isn't that kind of like the sound of your fingers on a chalkboard? That's what I want that sound to be like. You know, Every time you just see yourself throwing. Well, like when you're sitting in an arcade and you're watching your kids go through quarters. You ever had that happen? And they're standing there and they go over to the machine and they put that $5 bill of yours in that machine and then it clinks and you hear this rush of coins sloshing down in that little metal thing down below and they pick up the tokens. Why do you think they haven't changed it into tokens? To remove it from money. So that it removes it from, from the process of thinking about it. Once they've changed it into tokens, it's just a piece of coin. It's nothing. It's just a little piece of orange stuff. So what? I throw it in the machine, it doesn't really count. But does it count? Because when you put it into that machine and change it into tokens, you basically destroyed it. And you turn it into a few minutes of fun for your kids. But wouldn't it be nice to take those kids and say, listen, I'm going to give you the $5 for the tokens. But I want you to give me one of those dollars back. And instead of us playing for an hour here, I want you to play for 50 minutes. And we're going to take the 10 minutes of the time, and we're going to go out and have, you know, we're going to go for a little walk or something. And we're going to take that dollar that you would have destroyed right here in this building, and we're going to put it away for you, that extra dollar, so that it's going to start to grow. So that by the time you go to college, you're going to have twenty or $30,000 in your account. And by the time you get out of college, it's going to be thirty or forty or $50,000. By the time you get your first five years under your belt at your career, you're going to have a hundred, two hundred thousand dollars $200,000 under your belt. By the time you get to the, you know, 20 years in your career, you have a million or $2 million under your belt. And then you can decide what you, whether you want to work at that career or not, if you want to. See, that's what you're going to be doing with your kids. So when you destroy that money, you're, you're teaching yourself a lesson. You're teaching your kids a lesson, all right? How many of you like to... How many of you think that would be possible for you to teach your lessons, your kids a lesson like that? See, so raise a hand on that. It's tough because in our day and age, our kids are not taught this way, are they? So we talk about what we call uh, uh, the lifelong secrets. So as you turn to uh, your page in your manual, let's just fill in some of these blanks, shall we? Wealth is when small efforts produce big results. Poverty is when big efforts produce small results. What I just taught you is that small efforts over a period of time, compounded, can produce big results. But if you take your big efforts and you don't handle them correctly, they end up with nothing. So in your lifetime, how much money is going to go through your fingers? In your lifetime, on the average, how much money is going to flow through your fingers? At least a million dollars is going to flow through your fingers. If you're making 25000 a year times 40 years, that's a million bucks. So the question is, how, how is that going to stick? You take two people at the same job. One's, this, this person works and that person works. They end up with the same basic salary and they work uh, for their 40 years at this particular job, all of which, of course, is a myth. Do you have a job that you can work at for 40 years? You could do that at my dad's age, but you can't do that now. And you, um, you end up at the end of 40 years and one of them has had all their money flow through their fingers and they're on Social Security. While the other person has got a multi-million dollar net worth with the exact same salary that went through their fingers. Well, what's the difference? Well, one of the differences is that one person knew the money rules and the other one didn't. So let's fill in some more blanks here. Um, in your lifetime, at least a million dollars is going to go through your fingers. Why do some people end up with 10 times more money? Do they work 10 times harder? Are they 10 times smarter? Extremely prosperous people simply know how to play the money game. Fill those words in it. Play the money game. Okay? Play the money game. It's a game. You, you know how to play Monopoly, don't you? There's little pieces of paper and you roll the dice and all that stuff. Money is a game just like that. And nobody ever taught us what the rules are. So we end up playing with all these pieces of paper and not knowing how to get past go. Money is a game. If you know the rules, you win. If you don't know the rules, you lose. Seven basic skills of extremely prosperous people. Let's just fill them in right now. I'll cover my 
my future here for you, the future day for what we're going to spend together. I've just taught you secret number one, or skill number one. And when we ripped up our dollar, what did we learn about it? Save it. Not only just to save it, but I hope this is what you learned, how to value it. Most of us are never taught how to value those dollar bills. And so the, very the first secret and the first skill is to value it. Now once I've valued it and I know what it is and I've learned how to, to take care of it, the next skill I've got to have to do is to learn how to, what I call, control it. I've got to have that money controlled. Control it. And after I've controlled it, what do I have to do? Yeah, yeah I've, got, I've got to learn how to save it. And I'm going to be teaching you before we get down here this morning that you have to save, save it. Most of you, most of you save it, but you don't save, save it. You'll go to a, a, a new gas station and you'll save 10 cents a gallon. And which is two dollars that day. But then you don't save, save it. Because I ask you, where's the money? And you say, well, I don't know. You don't have it, right? So you all, you're all this budget, budget conscience, conscious, but you gotta know, you gotta show me where the money is once you save it. Then I have to learn how to invest it. Now I'm gonna show you how to invest it. This can be really simple. Anybody, because an elementary school kid can do this stuff we're going to be talking about here today. Number five, I've learned how to make it. And there's a difference between making money and investing money. Entrepreneurs do this. Anybody can do the investing part. But to be a, a person who makes money, you have to learn how to be an entrepreneur. And finally, you have to learn how to shield it. Shield it. In the 50s and the 60s, we could just make money. We could put the properties in our own names. We could, uh, we could just act as if we were wealthy. We could be conspicuously so. In the 90s and beyond, I'm going to show you that conspicuous consumption is not only economically stupid, but it's socially stupid and it's dangerous. In other words, you need to live like a millionaire but look like a pauper on paper. And I'll show you how to do that. Okay, and finally, this is what I call share it. And really should be starting with that one, number one. But we're going to put it at, here at the end because it seem, people seem to power to, to take it, they can, they can take it easier when we talk about that at the end. But frankly, learning how to share your wealth is the only reason to have it. Uh, a very wise man once said that the only reason to have any wealth is to learn how to share it with other people. If you want your wealth for any other reason, it's just going to turn to dust in your hands. But that's another discussion that we'll be having later on in the day. Those are some of the, se the secrets or the skills that we're going to talk about. None of these things that anybody in the room can't understand. They're all pretty basic. But what you find is if you don't have all of those seven, it's like having six numbers to the combination lock for the bank vault, right? Let me tell you the combination to your bank, bank vault right now. I know the number. Here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, zero. I have no idea what order those go in, <laughs> or how it turns to the left or turn to the right, but that's the combination lock. And so if, if you have six of these things up here and you don't have the seventh one or you don't have it in the right combination, then it really doesn't, the bank vault doesn't open for you. For instance, what if you don't value your money? If you don't value your money, eventually one of these days you're going to make a stupid investment decision. And you're going to lose it off. What if you don't control your money? Well, then you don't have the money to invest and to save. What if you don't save it? Well, then you don't have the value of it. What if you don't make the money? You don't have to create it on the side and you lose your job. Then you're, then you're out, then you're really out in the, in the woods. What if you don't know how to shield it and somebody sues you for a lawsuit that wasn't your fault? You're driving down the street and somebody blindsides you and then they sue you for everything you've got. See, there's, these kind of things can happen and if you don't know how to shield your money, you're in deep trouble. What if you don't know how to share it? And what if that sharing process uh, means that you don't know where to leave it to when you move on to the next stage? 
What if you were able to change your attitudes about that and have this one thing create the wealth, the wealth in, in and of itself? What if the universe was on your side, I guess is what I'm trying to say. See, if you look at really wealthy people, and I'm using wealth with a capital W, if you look at people who seem to have it all, then you look through this list and you find out that almost every one of them, if not to a person, will do every one of these things. And yet you look at people who have made it and lost it. Of course, I'm, I'm one of those people who have made it and lost it a couple times, but I've, I've learned now this is the stuff I really practice. And let's take Donald Trump here, for instance. Uh, what, where, where has Donald got it, got it wrong? He may be extremely prosperous today. Maybe he's a billionaire, but one of these days he's going to make another mistake. Let's go down the list and see which one, which one he gets wrong. Does he value his money? Does he control it? Does he save it? No. Does he invest it? Yeah, yeah, he does. Does he make it? Yeah, he's really good at making it. Does he shield it? Yeah, he's pretty good at shielding it. Does he share it? No, it doesn't share very well. Okay, let's go up here. This is, of course, of course what we know. Yeah, I think he doesn't value it by the way he spends it. You see the way he spends his money. Anybody who is conspicuously spending like that obviously doesn't understand money. And if you take Warren Buffett, for instance, you look at the house he lives in, you can see he really values every dollar. He lives in the same house he bought in 1955. His, his office space that he controls a $10 billion empire is 3,000 square feet. His office is a corner little office. That's 200 square feet in a corner. When you come in to look for his computer on his desk, they say, where's your computer, Warren? And he says, I am a computer. <laughs> he doesn't spend money frivolously. He takes care of it. And when you look at people like John Templeton, who have the Templeton uh, gr uh, Growth Funds, a very, very uh, prosperous and extremely successful. Uh, some of you have any, made any money in the Templeton Funds before? Anybody have any money invested in Templeton? Here's John Templeton, who's probably a very spiritual gentleman, extremely frugal, takes care of his money, he values every penny of it. If you look down this list, you'll see the ones that are probably going to end up keeping it. And I'll show you why Donald lost it the first time. First thing is you, you didn't value it, didn't do a very good job of controlling it, probably didn't save it at all. Invest it, yeah, he did well there. He did well on some of these things, did extremely well, but eventually one of these days is going to come get him going to come get him because you can't throw money away like that. Eventually before money just comes back and says, I'm not going to place my, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to stay with you very much longer. Okay? You see people around you that, that indiscriminately spend their money. You can just, you just get on the list of those seven things. You can say how many of those people are going to be having the money over a long period of time. Okay, so and one other blank we need to fill in back on secret number one, money does grow on trees. Einstein said the most powerful invention of man is... Compound interest. Einstein himself said the most powerful invention of man is compound interest. That's what we're going to be using. All this stuff is probably pretty normal to you. You've probably heard these things before. But what I want to do is for us to have what I call ahas here today. What's an aha? It's when you go, aha. You've been staring it in the face for years. And yet finally it clicks. Like Zig Ziglar says, we can send with our modern technology today, we can send a thought around the world in a quarter of a second. But sometimes it takes a quarter of a century to go the last quarter of an inch. <laughs> and today you're going to have some ahas. And as you listen here and sit here, and all of you have been practicing your money skills for your whole life. And as you sit here, you're going to go, oh, that's the piece that was missing. And you may have heard it a thousand times before. But today is the day we're going to make that, sh make that decision, okay? Um, all right, so um, let's look at what we call the, the high cost of procrastination. We've talked about burning money up or throwing money away. But let's just talk about how painful it is to put this stuff off. Suppose you could invest a few hundred dollars a month in mutual funds that, that have a history of growing between 10 and 20% per year. In 20 years, this is what you could amass. Suppose you could take a couple hundred dollars a month and invest it, okay? If you could invest a hundred dollars a month at 10 to 20%, your compound future value would be $310,000 in 20 years. Anybody planning on living another 20 years? Who's planning on living another 20 years? So this could happen to you, that $100 a month. Now, the way I do it in our family is I have them pull it right out of my bank account. I don't even see it, and I don't write checks for it. 
I want my mutual fund company or wherever I'm doing my investing to pull it directly out of there so that I, haven't, I haven't, don't have to make those decisions. Shall we eat this month or invest in mutual funds? I don't make that decision. I say, we'll starve. I'll figure out a way to, to, to get the money because I want to make sure my future is prosperous too. If I do 200 a month, that's 600,000. 300 a month, that's 900,000. 400 a month, that's a million two. 500 a month, that's a million five. Suppose you had 200 a month to invest. But you decided to wait a year. Oh, I'll just do that next year to start. What does your procrastination cost you? It's going to cost you $114,000 in future dollars. Money that could you lose forever. That's a 312 bucks a day. By not starting now, you're burning up your future. So what I'm trying to say is, if you don't start immediately, and a, a, a year goes by, then you start, right? By the time you reach that 20th year, there's going to be 100,000 less dollars sitting there waiting for you. So that really what you do is you basically made the decision that I want to destroy my future. Does that make sense? When you wait today, just today, you've said, I want to rip up $312 in the future. Well, that's no big deal. That's just, you know, three, three bucks a day today, but that's $312 a day in the future. See what I'm saying? So the key for you got to do is not only do you have to be careful with your money, but you have to start this process immediately. When we're done... You want to immediately start putting in place the things that we're going to be talking about. So by the next Monday, you are in process. And many of you are already in process. And I take my hats off to you. In the last five, six years, life has taught us that we have to be more careful. But if I were to look in the lives of some of you, I would find financial chaos going on. And I'm going to give you the tools here today to change that financial chaos into financial control. Like some control of your life, financial life? That's what we're going to talk about. Good. What we want to do now is, what I, is have what I call ahas. We do this every time we have a break. An aha is when you, you learn something. Oh, yeah, I got that for the first time. So give me a couple ahas here as we move into our first segment. Yes, right here. Liana? It takes more than just making money and saving money. You got to do Yeah, it takes more than just making and saving. There are some other steps involved in there. Good. Thank you. Oops, sorry. Give me another one. Yes, right here. Save it. Save it. Got to save, save it. That's right. Okay, and we'll be doing that some more of that here in a few minutes. Give me another one. Yes, right here. Terrence. Tearing the money up. Uh, Tearing the money up. And being aware of how much money gets away from me every day. Every day. How many of you got that one? That was a good aha for you, tearing that money up. Okay, good. Give me another one. Over here. Power of procrastination. The power of procrastination. That's right. And, and I'll be teaching you some more about procrastination here in a minute. Give me another one. Value. You got to value that money. Good. Over here. Power of compound interest. The power of compound interest. It's the most powerful invention you got working on your side. I want to tell you the opposite of compound interest. You see, some of you have compound interest working against you, right? Except your interest rates are 18 to 21 percent on some of your credit cards, and interest doesn't sleep. 